So today we're going to talk about the famous artist, inventor, scientist, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was born in Italy in 1452. So that is almost 600 years ago. Let's say it's and he was born in a small little town called Vinci, which is just outside of the city of today's Florence. And his parents actually weren't married, uh, which, you know, back then was a pretty big deal. And his mother really wasn't able to keep him. And then his father, since it was a big deal that they weren't married when he had him, didn't really want to keep him either. So they shipped him off to his grandparents who were like, mm no, we don't really want to take care of him either. So he was finally sent to his uncle's house and his uncle's name was Francesco and his uncle loved him very much and took very good care of him. His uncle was a farmer. So um, da Vinci spent a lot of time at his uncle's house. So Leonardo da Vinci was born in the town of Vinci and since his parents weren't married, he didn't actually have a last name. So they called him Leonardo da Vinci, which means Leonardo of Vinci. So that's where he gets his name from. So he he got a basic elementary education through his uncle, but because his parents weren't married, he wasn't ever going to be allowed to like join any fancy clubs or guilds or you know, go to university. So he kind of just worked on the farm, got a basic education and followed his interests and passions. And it's actually said that that might be one of the reasons why he became this, what people call jack of all trades or a renaissance man, where he became proficient or an expert in tons of different areas. And what really led that to happen was when he was 14, he became an apprentice, which is um, an apprentice is somebody who studies under um, a master of some sort, you know, master painter, master artist, master welder, something of like that. And, um, they go to this person and work for them and learn from them so that they too can become masters themselves one day. And he went and apprent was an apprentice for Andre del Verricchio. And with him, he learned a lot, like a lot, a lot. He learned drafting, which means like technical drawing, chemistry, metal smithing, plaster casting, which is like making big things out of plaster that you can make other sculptures with, uh, leather work, mechanics, carpentry, and of course the typical drawing, painting, sculpting, and modeling. And so da Vinci was with him for um, quite some time. You know, when he was 20, Leonardo finally qualified to be part of this big master's guild of arts and medicine. And he could have gone out and gotten an apprentice himself and done all this stuff, but he really liked Riccio so much that um, he stayed with him for a while until eventually he went and worked for the Duke of Milan, which is kind of like this high up politician uh, status, a duke. And the duke hired him to make all sorts of paintings. And so if you were an artist back then and you went and worked for uh, somebody big and powerful, they just pretty much paid for you to live, make art and be kind of a residence expert in their property. So this duke wanted him to build this giant statue of a horse. And like a giant statue, huge, like bigger than a house, giant statue. And he wanted it made of bronze, which was a challenge in and of itself because that would have been a lot of bronze and it would have been very heavy. And, you know, you really had to understand weight and proportions and balancing things and, you know, making sure it wasn't just going to fall over and crush somebody. So, so as you can see from this picture here, um, it shows in different statues that were made, were made to so the equestrian statue by Donatello, equestrian statue by Andre del Verrucchio, his, um, the master artist that he apprenticed under, <clears throat> you can see this statue that is 14 feet, feet high by Marcus Aurelius. Well, as we can see, the statue that Leonardo was working on was going to be 25 feet high, weigh 70 tons. Now, mind you, most cars are about between two and three tons. So 70 tons. 
Leonardo had to really focus on that, but he also really wanted to understand the anatomy of horses. So he went ahead and he studied horses and he took drawings after drawings after drawings of different horses. He wanted to understand their anatomy, which means their bones and their muscles. So he would actually, if a horse died, he would actually dissect that horse in order to be able to fully understand its anatomy. So there's some drawings here of, you know, just different joints of horses and, and how they move because he really wanted to understand what a horse was made up of and how it was made so that he could get the sculpture just right. Well, he made small studies of it. He did lots of drawing and it took him a couple of years and he was finally like, okay, man, we're ready to build this. Well, then a war broke out and all of the bronze that would have gone into making this statue actually all had to be gone or actually was all made into weapons. And so the horse actually never got to be made. He spent years on this project and it never actually was completed, which had to, I'm sure, be extremely frustrating. But um, horses weren't, you know, his only jam. He also did tons of designs, lots of particularly military weapons like tanks, uh, a war vehicle, even a submarine. And he actually made this one design of a giant crossbow. And it was so big, you see here in the picture that, can you see the man standing on the right of it behind the strings? And it was on wheels and they would like wheel this giant crossbow into the war feed things with it. It was pretty uh, intense. But he also uh, was very interested in flying. Now, some of you might recognize this first picture. I have a model of Da Vinci's helicopter in our classroom. Well, it is said that when Leonardo was a little baby, that a bird, a hawk specifically, a big hawk landed where he was laying and started, you know, trying to peck at him and mess with him. And this was very scary for, for him because he was very little, but it also is credited with maybe inspiring this obsession with flying because he made several flying machines. Uh, the second one you see here was meant for a person to get in and use the mechanics and flap the wings. So he ended up making some pretty amazing things or designing some, he ended up designing some pretty fantastic things. So when you think about his art, <clears throat> um, this here, this painting was one of the first that he was commissioned to do after he was, you know, accepted into this big artist guild in medicine when he was 20. And this is called Virgin of Rocks. And when you look at this piece, this is a very typical style of this time's art. This is the mother virgin holding baby Jesus. And it's painted kind of like in this oval panel uh, piece of wood. And so this was one of his first big commission paintings. And he painted it at a church. Now this next one called The Last Supper is depicting the last supper that Jesus had before he was crucified. And surrounding him are all of his disciples. Now this one is the most famous painting in the entire world. Uh, this is called Mona Lisa, and nobody knows who this lady was. It was just some rich person's wife that, you know, wanted painted. But it has always been looked at for her weird little smirk or smile. And there's a lot of mystery behind this painting, but it is hands down the most famous painting in the entire world. Now this picture here is called the Vitruvian Man. And what that means is da Vinci studied a lot about the proportion of the human body. So here it shows the perfect proportions, scientific measurements, proportions of the human body. And da Vinci was really, really interested in the human body, just like he was with the horses, the anatomy. And so he, just like he did with the horses, um, he would go and go to medical institutions and he would dissect humans and study them as much as he could. Here you can see uh, different muscle groups and foot bones. Uh, he was very fascinated by the idea of tendons and the, the way everything was connected and worked. So these are medical drawings where he would try to make the most as realistic 
as he could drawings of human anatomy to truly understand them. See, so here's where he drew a skeleton, taking time to try to get every single bone in there and write about it. So all of these anatomy drawings that you just looked at, these were all found in different notebooks that da Vinci kept. And he was famous for these very detailed, large sketchbooks and notebooks where he drew and wrote everything he was studying and designing. And one of the interesting things about them is that whenever he wrote in them, he wrote backwards. So the way that you would read it was looking at a mirror. And in these notebooks are all of his sketches for inventions, all of his horse anatomy, human anatomy, anything that he was looking at. This is one of his inventions. This here is him trying to understand human development inside the womb. And when somebody is pregnant, he was trying to understand what, what was happening in the body. And you can see here just some more doodles and writing of his inventions. And we still have these notebooks. These notebooks are preserved very carefully in different museums. And they are priceless, truly, truly priceless. So look into the genius of this man that lived 570 years ago. So Leonardo da Vinci um, passed away in May of 1519. So it was right after, it was right after his 67th birthday, which for that long ago, he lived quite a long time. So that's just a really quick story about Leonardo da Vinci. So thank you so much for coming to my history story about Leonardo da Vinci. Go ahead. I mean, if you're interested, look up and find his different inventions. Find the one that you think is the best. There's even tell stories of him after all of his human anatomy trying to create a robot, which is pretty cool. So thanks again for coming. If you need me, reach out. I miss you. I think you are all fantastic. Don't stop being you. All right. I'll talk to you later.
they did make a cast of it. No, ignore that. So it was going to be one big horse, a giant project. 